The Call of Duty World at War Iceberg, a video that delves into various levels of World at War knowledge, ranging from widely known facts to obscure or even absurd entries. I recently created a Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare specific iceberg a few months ago, and over the course of the rest of this year into 2024, I plan on covering each Call of Duty title from what is dubbed as the Golden Age. Today we're focusing on 2008's World at War. If you guys find this video appealing, do let me know in the comments below if you're interested in more content like this. And subscribe to the channel for future icebergs. But without further ado, let's get started. For three days, luck alone has saved his wretched life. Zombies. One of the reasons why World of War stands out is due to the game being the first Call of Duty to introduce the Zombies round-based mode. During the development of the campaign mission Hard Landing, an abundance of motion-captured wounded soldier animations caught the attention of Jesse Snyder, a campaign developer. He and a group of devs quietly repurposed elements from Hard Landing, making adjustments and additions to create the first map, Nocter Untoden. Now, according to former Treyarch studio head Mark Lamia, along with Jason Blundell and David Vondahart in an interview, the mode initially emerged as a passion project during a challenging phase in creating an authentic World War II shooter. Mark discovered the mode's development in secrecy and, despite initial skepticism, found it surprisingly enjoyable. Gradually, he introduced the mode to Activision higher-ups, striking a deal to include it in the game without marketing it, and making it accessible only after completing the campaign. As players received their copies of World at War and progressed through the campaign, stumbling upon Nocturne and Toten became a thrilling surprise. Its blend of horror, mystery, and addictive gameplay garnered immense support from fans, sparking widespread enthusiasm and requests for more content from Treyarch. This allowed Treyarch to continue the mode and make it a pillar among the campaign and multiplayer experiences. Although the Zombies mode did not begin with a story, the developers noticed that fans were picking up on some hints and even bugs in the map that were not intended to be Easter eggs. This sparked the idea for Treyarch to begin what would eventually be known as the Aether Story, which would continue into the Black Ops sub-franchise for years to come. The team spent the rest of the World of War cycle creating more maps for original playable characters in the form of Dempsey, Takio, Nikolai, and Richtofen, and adding in extra easter eggs like radios, the dentist chair audio easter egg in Verrucked, the monkey bomb furnace, as well as the fly trap or teddy bear hide and seek easter eggs on Doris. Now I just want to clarify that this iceberg isn't specifically about delving deep into the intricate lore or extensive easter eggs and references of Call of Duty Zombies. I don't foresee exploring those aspects until I even consider making a dedicated Zombies Iceberg, which I'll be honest, I don't know if I could really mentally handle, at least at this current moment, maybe in the future. But I just wanted to mention this in case there are some hardcore Zombies fans or YouTubers watching this video expecting in-depth discussions on intricate Zombies topics, crazy easter eggs, and more in this video. Raygun in Campaign In the Little Resistance campaign mission, after triggering the rocket strikes, head to the right side of the beach. You'll come across a water-filled crater. When you spot the crater, stand in it for like 5 or 6 seconds. Then move to the center where you'll find another small crater filled with water. Stand in that one as well for a couple of seconds. And then proceed to the far left near the ocean to find one more water-filled crater. Stay in that last crater until your screen shakes vigorously. If done correctly, four statues will emerge from the ground, each holding a ray gun that you could use for the rest of this mission. And you could also go back and grab more ammo if you need to. It's a really cool easter egg. When I think of Call of Duty easter eggs, and I'm not just talking about zombies, but just Call of Duty easter eggs in general, one of the first easter eggs that comes to my mind is this easter egg right here. This is a classic. Custom Zombies after the release of World at War, Treyarch decided to release mod tools as a way for the PC community to create their own custom zombies maps with their own perks, weapons, rules, power-ups, and more. The addition of the mod tools released led to the first golden age of custom zombies with YouTubers like Syndicate and the late Yodi Slayer showcasing the mode to thousands of people online and even collaborating on a few custom map playthroughs as well. Although I didn't personally play World at War during its peak, I remember that the reason why I bought the game in the first place was because of Yodi Slayer and Syndicate. Alongside watching Cheat Like a Champ's COD 4 Death Runs, which I briefly touched upon in my COD 4 Iceberg, I used to also really enjoy Yodi and Tom's custom zombies playthroughs. They were just something I always looked forward to. By the way, this is the first World of War custom map I've played since the Black Ops 3 mod tools were released, and I gotta say, it still feels great. Shout out to Fear Reaper 666 for creating this awesome Minecraft village map. 
prequel to Black Ops. Despite having a different title, World of War takes place in the same timeline as the Black Ops series and is considered a prequel or the beginning of the overarching story. The primary reason behind this designation is the presence of Reznov, a key character in the campaign who is later seen alongside Alex Mason in Black Ops. Reznov even makes an appearance in the Black Ops 2 campaign and even serves as an operator in the blackout mode of Black Ops 4. There is also literally a mission inside Black Ops where you get to see Dmitry Petrenko, the character you play throughout the Russian campaign of World of War, alongside Reznov once again, although the ending to that mission is really depressing. Scary Soundtrack I mean, what what else can I say? This the soundtrack is scary. I always get chills down my spine, legs, and and other parts of my body that I don't want to talk about. Whenever I boot up World at War, it's just creepy and scary. Which is the whole point of it. It's to be creepy and scary. The music for the Call of Duty World at War soundtrack was composed by Sean Murray. Broken MP40. As mentioned previously, I didn't personally play World at War until a few years later down the road. So while I didn't experience World of War during its peak, I've heard numerous accounts from YouTubers and veteran Call of Duty players about the prevailing meta at the time. According to these stories, the go-to choice in multiplayer was the MP40, and it was described as exceptionally overpowered. Apparently the MP40 in World of War was said to be broken to an astonishing extent, featuring a predictable recoil pattern, an absurd range, and the capability to achieve a one-headshot kill, making it the weapon of choice for many players during that era. This news isn't really surprising to me because the Golden Age Call of Duties, at least a few of them, were just broken. I'm looking at you, Modern Warfare 2. Not that one, the old one. The good one, not, not that giant green pile of shit. Beta. Players who pre-ordered World at War from select retailers like GameStop, Game and EB Games in Australia or North America, or those who were members of the Call of Duty website were provided with codes granting access to the World at War beta for the Xbox 360 and PC on October 10th, 2008. This beta release marked a significant moment in the Call of Duty series as it turned out to be the last multiplayer beta until the release of Black Ops 3. Making Day Macon Day is a daytime variant of the multiplayer map Macon that was made available for free. Which, I don't know if you guys know this, but back then, free content in Call of Duty was just, like, scarce. Nowadays, you pay 70 bucks and you get a half-baked game and, like, a couple new maps throughout the year for free. But back then, back then, you had to pay for stuff. So even though this is just, like, a daytime variant of a map already in the game, it was still cool. Map Packs in the era before free multiplayer DLC content became the norm <clears throat> and very overpriced microtransactions, <clears throat> Call of Duty used to offer downloadable map packs for purchase. During its peak, World at War introduced three DLC expansions available for the Xbox 360, PS3, and PC versions of the game. The first DLC map pack was released on March 19th, 2009, featuring the multiplayer maps Nightfire, Station, Knee Deep, and the Zombies Experience, Varuk. Following that, the second map pack came out on June 11th, 2009, and included the multiplayer maps Bonsai, Corrosion, Subpens, and the Zombies map, Dino Numa. The third and final map pack was released on August 6th, 2009, and contained the multiplayer maps Battery, Breach, Revolution, and the final Zombies map of the game, Duris. Easter Egg Songs in Zombies Across the four Zombies maps in World of War, players can discover a plethora of Easter eggs and secrets, with one of the most iconic being the inclusion of Easter egg songs. Each map has a corresponding Easter egg song and steps on how to activate them. In Nocturne and Toten, knifing a radio next to the mystery box beyond the help door would allow the player to listen to the World of War soundtrack. On Verrucked, players can initiate the song Lullaby of a Dead Man by flushing one of the toilets in the upstairs bathroom section of the asylum three times. In Shinonuma, listening to the creepy phone call in the comm room will activate the song The One. And finally, on Doris, players could trigger the song Beauty of Annihilation by interacting with three jars scattered throughout the map. The Pack-A-Punch camo was goaded. I just want to take the next few seconds to admire and appreciate this beautiful Pack-A-Punch camo. After over a decade of zombies, this is still my personal favorite zombies Pack-A-Punch camo. Don't get me wrong, the Origins camo was cool, even the Mob of the Dead camo was cool, and I will say Cold War's Pack-A-Punch camo, or camos, are pretty solid, but nothing beats this. And that was layer one. Yippee. Woohoo. Alright. Your reactions could be quicker. 
but the job is done. Death cards. In the World of War campaign, players can discover death cards, which are playing cards strategically placed on top of vertical rifles like the Arasaka and the Car 98K. The concept of death cards bears resemblance to the secret intel found in COD 4 and other games in the franchise. These cards unlock special abilities in co-op play and in private matches. In total, there are 13 cards to collect. Thunder, located in Semper Fi, causes enemies to explode via headshots. Hard Headed, located in Little Resistance, causes enemies to take less bullet damage. Suicide King, located in hard landing allows players to shoot explosive pistol rounds while downed. This pistol happens to be known as the Holy Pistol, which is a really badass name. Cold Dead Hands, found in Vendetta, makes it so enemies cannot drop their weapons when killed. Sticks and Stones, found in Their Land, Their Blood, strips away the player's weapon arsenal and bestows them with just a knife and grenades. Vampire, found in Burn Em Out, forces the player to kill enemies in order to recharge their health. Black Jacket, located in Relentless, allows enemies to take less explosive damage. Body Armor, found in Ring of Steel, allows enemies to die only by headshots. Undead Soldier, found in Eviction, gives enemies a dead and decayed appearance. Painkiller, found in Blowtorch and Corkscrew, allows players to shoot downed co-op teammates to revive them. Berserker, found in Breaking Points, grants the player the ability to go berserk if they get 3 kills in 5 seconds. This allows the player to be invincible for a short period of time, but only a knife can be used while in the mode. Paintball, found in Heart of the Reich, makes all weapons fire paintballs instead of bullets. And finally, Victory, found in Downfall, limits the player's HUDs, turns on friendly fire, and cuts bleed out time in half. These death cards are only found on the Xbox, PlayStation, and PC versions of World at War. Co-op Campaign World at War was the first Call of Duty to introduce a co-op campaign, allowing players and friends to team up in missions like Semper Fi or Little Resistance and save the world. Vendetta and Black Cats were the only missions that couldn't be played in co-op mode. Additionally, players had the option of competitive co-op, where they could challenge up to three others in most campaign missions to compete for the highest score. World at War Final Fronts The PlayStation 2's World at War Final Fronts might share a title and cover with the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Wii versions, but it's essentially an entirely different game. It boasts its own unique missions centered on the US battles in the Pacific Theater, the European Battle of the Bulge, and the British advancement on the Rhine River into Germany. With a total of 13 missions, this version completely skips the online multiplayer and zombies modes. This game was published by Rebellion instead of Treyarch, and the game starts with a training mission featuring Joe Miller, and his squad mates Roebuck and Polanski. Throughout the game, players also take charge of other characters like Private Lucas Gibson, Gunnery Sergeant Alex McCall, and Private Tom Sharp, each involved in critical battles of the European theater's final stages. I've never played the PlayStation 2 version of World of War, but if any of you guys have, let me know in the comments below if it was any good. Limited Collector's Edition For a total of $79.99 plus applicable sales tax, the Limited Collector's Edition of Call of Duty World at War is packaged in a metal tin featuring a plastic slip cover. This special edition includes a distinctive metal canteen in addition to the standard edition of the game. Moreover, purchasers of this limited edition copy of World at War received an Xbox Live Marketplace code that grants early access to the FG-42 Advanced Light Machine Gun, along with a week of double experience points and a clan tag with a unique color. Customers who pre-ordered from GameStop stores were also sent a code via email allowing them to unlock the M1A1 for use in multiplayer games, gaining access to it 64 levels ahead of the standard progression. And apparently some copies of the limited collector's edition also included a code for a free trial of Xbox Live and also a Netflix subscription, which is uh, kind of weird but also cool. Let me know in the comments if any of you got that. World of War DS Version World of War for the Nintendo DS is similar to Final Fronts in the sense that it's an entirely different campaign from the Xbox and PlayStation versions. The plot revolves around three characters, USMC Private Rook, Soviet Army Private DeMar Corrado, and SAS Private Dawkins. Their journeys somewhat mirror the battles of the console version, but from unique perspectives. The game was developed by Endspace, released alongside the full version of World of War, and featured online multiplayer as well as local. Up to four players could be supported online with four various types of games. This version of World of War War, however, does not have a zombies mode. World of War Zombies iPhone Yet another World of War version, because why not? Call of Duty World of War Zombies was an iOS adaptation of the classic zombies game mode developed by IdeaWorks Game Studio and published by Activision. The game was released on November 16th, 2009 for the iPhone and on April 10th, 2010 for the iPad. The game allowed for multiplayer co-op and featured Noct, Baruch, Shinonuma, and Doris. Now from what I've heard, this version of World at War was pretty fun, but sadly, this version of the game is not available on the App Store anymore. World at War Mobile 
Jesus Christ, why are there so many versions of this goddamn game? World at War Mobile was a version of the game that was exclusive to the Verizon store and was available on non-iOS-based touchscreen mobile phones. The game was developed by Glue Mobile, published by Activision, and featured run-and-gun style gameplay, an entirely different story, and a different set of characters. McFarlane World at War Toys In sync with the launch of World at War, McFarlane Toys rolled out four action figures. Three of these figures showcase distinct versions of U.S. Marine Corps infantry, while the fourth spotlights a British Special Ops soldier. Juggernaug Wonderwaff Glitch One of the most infamous glitches in Call of Duty history is the World of War Zombies Juggernaug Wonderwaff Glitch. If a player buys Juggernaug on Reese, then accidentally zaps themselves with the Wonderwaff Wonder Weapon, it's game over baby. Even though the Jug icon is still available on the player's screen, the perk no longer works correctly. YouTuber JB Shady goes into further detail on this glitch in their video titled World of War Deep Dive Wonderwaff Glitch and Juggernaug, which I highly recommend you check out if you want to learn more. 357. Just like in COD 4, in World at War, achieving certain killstreaks is tied to specific numbers 3, 5, and 7. Upon reaching three consecutive kills without dying, players unlock the Recon Plane. The Artillery Killstreak becomes available after securing five kills without dying. And lastly, achieving a seven killstreak without dying grants players the ability to deploy attack dogs. That was the second layer of the iceberg. Woohoo! Alright. Excellent aim. You are a natural hunter. Time to close in for the kill. Scrapped British Campaign Plans for a British campaign were drafted to potentially coincide with the Russian and American campaigns, or possibly substitute one of them. Nevertheless, the British campaign was ultimately scrapped due to time constraints. However, before its cancellation, a minimum of six missions were developed set in both Holland and Rhineland. Now, I'm not entirely positive if there's any information out there on the Rhineland missions. I personally couldn't find anything. However, according to the Call of Duty wiki, there are descriptions for three of the Holland missions. Now, in the first Holland mission, the player would ride in a jeep with two characters named Sergeant Maddock and Corporal Goddard. The main objective would have been to go through a German checkpoint disguised as German soldiers, retrieve some documents guarded by snipers, and steal an Opel Blitz and escape the base. In mission two, the player joined by Sergeant Maddock would sneak through a German convoy and defuse bombs on three bridges without alerting the enemies. After defusing the bombs, the player would have met with Corporal Goddard's squad and would make their way to a German supply depot via a forest convoy with tripwires attached to bouncing Bettys. It's worth noting that if someone did survive the explosion of one of these traps, a tank would have fired at the player. After escaping the equivalent of the Home Alone house, because that's what this forest reminds me of, the player would have engaged with a German convoy and destroyed the supply depot with satchel charges, followed by air support forcing the enemy to retreat. In the final Holland mission, the player along with a squad would have arrived at a German mansion. They would plant a satchel charge to gain access to the building. The player would then rescue a certain number of POWs and regroup with their squad to defend the mansion from a German counterattack. After defending the mansion, the player would have made their way towards a town with their team to assault troops in the town square. Now two enemy types were developed and scrapped for these missions, including the Fallschirm Jäger and the Volkssturm for the longer missions in the campaign. The Nashorn, which is a type of German tank used during the war, is also referenced in the scripts for the second cut mission set in Rhineland. Scrapped Weapons In addition to the abandoned campaign, several weapons were left on the cutting room floor, including the Bren, the Katana, the Lee Enfield, the PPS-43, and Sten. Two weapon attachments were also scrapped from the multiplayer, the compensator and the select fire option. Three gun glitch on zombies. In the early days before Mule Kick became available, players found a way to acquire three guns in zombies by cleverly utilizing Bouncing Betty's, the Pack-a-Punch machine, and a good deal of patience. A YouTuber named Irish Zombie Gamers created a video about a decade ago now detailing this glitch and demonstrating the steps to execute it smoothly. Now I'm not entirely sure if Treyarch decided to create Mule Kick after seeing so many videos of players performing this three gun glitch, but I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. Call of Duty 5 Treyarch, before settling on the title World at War, referred to their next game as Call of Duty 5 with a Roman numeral 5. The following pre-marketing key image on screen was created by Thomas A. S., a concept artist who has worked on art for various Call of Duty games like Infinite Warfare for example. Cancelled 4th Map Pack 
Treyarch had plans to release a fourth map pack for World of War, but due to resources at Treyarch being redirected to finish the Call of Duty Black Ops campaign on schedule, and the release timing being way too close to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2's release, the map pack was ultimately scrapped. The map pack was initially planned to feature three zombies maps, Coast, Paris, and Theater. Coast was eventually reworked into the Black Ops DLC map called The Dead. Paris was scrapped and reworked for Black Ops' final DLC, but was ultimately replaced by Moon. And finally, Theater was transformed into Black Ops 1's launch map, Kino Der Toten. Scrapped Multiplayer Maps World of War has an extensive array of scrapped multiplayer maps. Among them, Atoll was described as a small to medium-sized Pacific island, ideal for free-for-all, team deathmatch, and war. Beachhead was envisioned as a battleground amidst bloodied sands, suitable for intense vehicular combat. There was also a map titled Carrier, which funny enough is a map in Black Ops 2, although I can only imagine the World of War version being very different from the Black Ops 2 version. Additionally, there were scrapped maps called Cavern, Docks, Subway, and Wetlands that never made its way into the final release. And according to the World at War Breeze wiki, there are allegedly more string files for minor cut maps in the game called Broadside, Casino, Lagoon, Struggle, Trenches, Encampment, and Bautzen. Breeze wiki also features additional maps titled Grave, Garden, Sand Trap, Invasion, Rock, St. Hoost, Square, Storm, Streets, Chillin', and Clutter, though the site does not elaborate on these alleged scrap maps any further. Now, to clarify, some of the latter alleged maps could be cut maps or early versions of final maps or something entirely different, so just bear that in mind. Other Scrapped Missions Besides the scrapped Rhineland and Holland missions, there are a couple of other scrapped campaign missions, titled Fly, Prologue, and Training. According to some script files found in the mod tools, Fly would be a complex mission as the player would have been able to change its course, depending on whether they could have prevented intelligence from reaching the enemy or not. Prologue would have begun with the player being awoken by an officer staging that Japanese forces were approaching and that they were low on supplies. Finally, Training, which appears reminiscent of the training sequence from Call of Duty 3. Level scripts and four screenshots are present in the mod tools as well as some audio files. Apparently there were two additional levels that took place in Berlin as well, Bur 1B and Bur 1B2. Tank War Tank War, a planned large-scale mode akin to Team Deathmatch but centered on playable tanks, remains relatively mysterious with limited information available. Its existence is hinted through audio files of announcers and a file that appeared in the records section during the beta phase. From the name and announcer voices, it's inferred that Tank War would have revolved around armored warfare. Similar to Team Deathmatch, the objective likely involved destroying enemy tanks. It might have featured battles between the Japanese Type 97 tanks and American M4 Sherman tanks, as well as the Russian T-34 versus is the German Panzer IV. This suggests the potential addition of the Type 97 and M4 Sherman to multiplayer had the mode been fully developed. Besides those two tanks, there were three additional vehicles allegedly intended for the cut tank war mode as well, those vehicles being the M8 Greyhound, the SD KFZ 222, and the Type 1 HOK. And that was Layer 3. Woohoo. Yay. Armored patrol. We must find another route to Amsel. This way. Before they discover the dead. Fourth kill streak. Treyarch had plans for introducing a fourth kill streak, larger in scale, attainable after acquiring dogs. However, the exact number of kills required to reach this fourth kill streak remains unknown. Those plans were ultimately scrapped, probably due to development time constraints. Each faction would have had their own fourth exclusive streak. For the US Marine Raiders, the fourth streak would have been a B-17 Flying Fortress. For the Germans, they would have had access to the Carpet Bomb streak. The Japanese would have had access to the Kamikaze streak, and finally, the Red Army would have had access to the Katyusha rocket launcher. South Park Cameo In the South Park Season 12 episode, The Ungroundable, Stan, Cartman, Kyle, Kenny, along with the rest of their class, are in the computer lab at school playing World at War, which is, which is really funny to me. <laughs> Saving Private Ryan in the first mission of the campaign, Semper Fi, your squad mate Private First Class Ryan is grabbed by a burning Japanese soldier. Now just like Private Royce Wicks in COD 4, the player has the option to save Private Ryan or let him burn. If the player chooses to save Private Ryan, they will earn the achievement or trophy, Saved Private Ryan. This of course is a giant nod or homage to the World War II film, Save a Private Ryan, starring Tom Hanks, Matt Damon, and uh, a family guy. <laughs> a family. Cut Perks 
three perks did not make it into the multiplayer mode, those being Commanding Squad Leader, Magic Wrench, and PMD-6 times 2 which was intended to let players place two PMD-6 anti-personnel mines. As for the first two perks, details about those are pretty scarce, though their icons were found in the game files. Ammo-matic Ammo-matic is a known cut zombies perk as old as time. Intended for Shinonuma, this perk only exists in texture sheets and leftover voice files. This perk was designed to, of course, provide players with a max ammo upon purchase. Despite the perk being cut from World at War, custom map creators have brought the perk machine to life. And although it's not ammo-matic, Cold War zombies and Modern Warfare zombies do have ammo crates where players can purchase ammo. I'm not entirely sure if Vanguard had ammo boxes because I stayed far away from that game when it came out, but I wouldn't be surprised if ammo crates were available in that game as well. Payload Payload, had it made it into the final game, would have been the first new Zombies mode alongside Round Based. This mode would have required players to escort a payload while contending with time pressure. Evidence of its existence includes scripts and a map file in the mod tools, indicating that specific maps were likely designed specifically for this mode. Reading this back, it honestly sounds like escort missions from modern day Zombies, but I could totally be wrong. Maybe Treyarch had a totally different vision for this. Other alleged cut zombies maps. According to the Call of Duty wiki, two additional zombies maps from World of War were in the works before being completely scrapped. These of course were Farm and Macon. Farm was discovered via leftover model files remaining in the mod tools, and there are references to the Opel Blitz and Type 94 being featured on the map. And as for Macon, there were leftover zombie model files. I say cut zombies maps, but these two maps could have totally just been like test maps for developers, but I can't really say for certain. Cut Zombies Enemies Brawlers, believe it or not, were supposed to be in World at War with the launch of Kino, but, you know, as stated previously, the entire map was pushed to Black Ops. Another enemy known as the Engineer Zombie was planned to be the primary boss in the Coast map. However, the developers replaced him with George Romero during the transition to Black Ops. Remastered World at War Maps so Call of Duty is very famous for remastering the same maps over and over again. You know, back in the day, having a remastered or a remake of a popular multiplayer map from an older title was a gift. But these days, especially in this hellscape, the developers just throw them at us constantly. I'm not knocking Sledgehammer for Modern Warfare 3 having Modern Warfare 2's base maps remastered, by the way, because number one, a lot of those maps haven't been seen in over 10 years, and two, they had 16 months to make that game, and also had to deal with Infinity Ward. Anyways, throughout various Call of Duty titles, specifically Vanguard and Black Ops 3, the developers had resurrected some old classic World at War multiplayer maps. In Vanguard, for example, Castle, Dome, and Sub Pens made their way into the title. Meanwhile, BO3 saw the return of Bonsai, albeit remade into Verge, and Rupture, which is a remake of Outskirts. However, instead of tanks being present on the map, players can control mechs, and that's really cool. Oh, and I almost forgot, Hazard from Black Ops, which is a remake of the World of War map, Cliffside. And that was Layer 4. Woohoo. Alright. I will draw his fire. Keep your eyes open for the flash. Ready? Now! Zombified Players. Several scripts were discovered pertaining to zombifying the player, triggering effects like granting the Brains weapon, which is a melee weapon accessible in the PC version of World of War via the command console, also reducing movement speed by 30% and causing all zombies to disregard them. If a player turned zombie was killed, they would be downed, potentially allowing revival by other player-controlled zombies. However, it remains uncertain whether this mechanic was intended as a gameplay feature or for use in a specific game mode, like Turned, which eventually debuted in Black Ops 2. Which was a very underrated mode, by the way, and I'm not really sure why Treyarch has never tried to bring it back in some capacity, but you know, I digress. Default Weapon Default weapon, like brains, is another secret weapon hidden inside of World at War. This is essentially the base for weapons in Call of Duty titles that are based on Infinity Ward's IW3 engine. It's basically a hand that fires bullets and it's really funny. Cut Traps There were five cut zombie traps in development. The Auto Turret, the Barrel, the Battery, the Chopper, and the Guillotine. 
or guillotine, or however you want to say it, it doesn't matter. The auto turret was designed to automatically target and fire at zombies. It was slated to cost 1500 points and had a 30 second operational duration. Attempting to purchase the turrets without sufficient points would apparently trigger a unique line of dialogue. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this turret eventually made its way into Kino Der Toten, unless this is a completely different auto turret that I have no idea about. Now, details on the barrel and the battery traps are pretty scarce with only mentions of their fire and electricity based nature respectively. The battery trap akin to the barrel lacks substantial information and might have been replaced by the zappers previously seen in Varuk. And the chopper trap was intended to slice through zombies, while the guillotine, guillotine, whatever, tomato, tomato, would temporarily block off a specific section of the map confining players to a limited area if they failed to escape after activating the trap. Planned Camos Weapon camouflage was in the plans for Call of Duty World of War, yet ultimately were canned from the game for unknown reasons, but if I had to guess I'd say time constraints. However, names of camouflages exist within the game's files, and those camos include Reich, Siberian, Royal, Yankee, Rising Sun, Gold, Blood, Olive, Setting Sun, Jewel, and Ocean. Now, although the names exist in the files, there aren't any real images of these camos and what they might look like. But if I had to take a guess as to what some of these camos would look like, gold would look like gold, obviously. Blood, I could see it being either just a fully red camo or perhaps a red tiger-esque camo. Rising sun, I could totally see it looking like this. Ocean, that's definitely got to be a blue color, right? But anyways, if Treyarch and Activision ever decided to release a World at War remastered, which they won't, they will never do that. Or at least if they did, it would just be the campaign. But hypothetically, in a better timeline or a better world if they decided to remaster the full game. God, I hope they added camos in that timeline. Tunguska. Outside of the zombies map Shinonuma, in a random hut, there is a word written on a wall that reads Tunguska. Now, Tunguska was an event that took place on June 30th, 1908 in Siberia. Scientists believe that a meteor airburst by an asteroid four to six miles above the Earth's surface was apparently responsible for flattening an estimated 80 million trees and possibly taking the lives of three people. Now, there are meteors laying outside of the zombies map laced with element 115, so it's possible that Tunguska is just referring to the meteors outside the map. However, the map Call of the Dead was in early development during the time that Shinonuma was just about to be ready to launch. And as previously stated, the fourth cancelled World of War map pack was going to include three more zombies maps, which were Kino, Coast, and Paris. And like I stated previously, Kino was saved for Black Ops 1, Paris was transformed into Moon, and Coast was an early build of Call of the Dead. So it's totally possible that the word Tunguska on Shinonuma means nothing, or maybe the developers knew that there would be a map set in Siberia at some point, and this was their way of teasing it. But who really knows? Hellhounds scrapped from Verrucked. According to Reddit user Bra Moment Lotta Numbers, along with Breeze Wiki, Hellhounds were apparently going to make their way into Verrucked, but were scrapped and saved for Shinonuma, which was honestly a great decision from Treyarch. I mean, mainly because Verrucked is such a tight map that adding dogs would have probably overwhelmed a lot of players. And also, the map is already super creepy and scary, so I feel like the addition of dogs would have just resulted in millions of piss puddles, which is disgusting temporarily banned in Japan. Upon World at War's release, and this is no surprise at all, the title was banned in Japan for its violence against Japanese soldiers. However, the ban was eventually lifted. Reznov's Plan In the zombies map Nocturne Tone, there is some text written on the wall by the stairs that reads, Ascend from Darkness, which happens to be the second stage in Reznov's plan in the first Black Ops game. The Porter's X2 ray gun, named after the developer who created it. So the Pack-a-Punch version of the ray gun, the Porter's X2 ray gun, gets its name from Treyarch weapon artist Max Porter, who created the weapon as a side project. Eventually, as the Aether story continued, the in-game lore states that a Group 935 scientist named H. Porter created the weapon, which is also a reference to Max. Jesse Snyder almost fired for ray gun easter egg in campaign. Jesse Snyder, the creator of the Zombies mode in Call of Duty, revealed on Twitter back in 2020 that he was almost fired from Treyarch for putting the ray gun inside of the campaign mission Little Resistance. Now, according to Snyder, another developer named Max Porter, who we just talked about, the creator of the ray gun, came to him with a 3D ray gun model he toyed with for other reasons and figured it would be a great addition to the game. Now, one day, Jesse decided to shove the weapon into the campaign mission, and apparently Treyarch higher-ups at the time did not appreciate a sci-fi weapon 
in a story that was meant to be taken seriously. Hidden MG in Fountain on Verrucht. If a player decides to no-clip outside of Verrucht using console commands and heads to the center of the map where the fountain is located, an MG pop-up appears on screen. And if you no-clip under the map, you could see an MG just chilling on a pillar. And it's usable. While we're on the topic of Verrucht, there are a lot of hidden rooms around the map, and there's also a ton of guns just chilling underneath the map as well. Just like the MG, except these guns are not usable at all. Pre-order poster. According to Reddit user Nutchmuck, their pre-order copy of World at War from Best Buy came with this very cool cloth poster. Now I'm including this poster in the final layer because I personally have never seen this pre-order poster before, and I think that it's such a super obscure yet pretty awesome pre-order item. This pre-order poster is very much based on the early marketing key image for World at War created by Thomas A. S., which I showed off in a previous entry, before Treyarch settled on the World at War title. Visible red lights from moon on Doris. If a player no clips and flies up to the moon on Doris, they may or may not notice some red lights. Now, originally, people just assumed that this was Element 115, but after the release of Moon, it seems like these lights are meant to be Griffin Station. Dead guy on Verrucht won't stop screaming. So I was replaying Verrucked the other day, you know, to get some gameplay for this video. Normally whenever I play Call of Duty, I have the volume turned all the way down because I don't know why, but Call of Duty is just such a loud f***ing game and the audio always pierces my ears. But in this case, I decided to turn it up because why not? For context, you tend to hear a lot of random voices on Verrucked and one of those voices happens to just be a guy screaming. And I swear to God, in my entire life of playing Call of Duty Zombies, I have never f***ing heard this guy scream as much as he did in this particular game. Maybe I was deaf growing up, but I really don't remember hearing this guy constantly screaming over and over again. I mean, listen to this. I mean, maybe because in this particular game I had console cheats on and that might have set something off. I, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a gynecologist. I have no freaking clue. But anyways, that was the final layer of the iceberg. <sighs> I'm going to go take a bath. As heroes, we will return to Russia's embrace. Our land. Our people. Our blood. Well guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. As I stated in my COD 4 iceberg, I know that I could have probably covered tons of other wild obscure World of War trivia and facts, and maybe one day in the future I'll provide a newer updated version of this video with even more details. But nonetheless, hopefully you learned something new or just enjoyed the content. Like I stated previously in the video, I plan on covering every single Call of Duty from the golden age of COD over the next year. So if you're excited for those future icebergs, then please drop a like on the video and comment below below to show your support. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new around here. Click the bell icon to be notified on whenever I upload a brand new video. Follow me on all of my social links and join my Discord server. The links are in the bio below. Have a fantastic day everyone. And remember, the world at war was and still is awesome.